but we are going to talk about clothing and we're going to particularly talk about the idea of sustainable fashion because I'm joined now by Shazia Salim. Shazia is a designer and founder of her own brand and boutique called Pop London and she's here with us now. Shazia, welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me on again. I mean, I think in in almost every area of life, almost all of us are trying to think, how can we be more sustainable? How can we be a bit more green? How can we be a bit more responsible, perhaps? But I don't really know what sustainable fashion means. Is that a, is that a problem that lots of people have? Yes, it is actually, Robert. Um, the 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 conversations that um, I've had with customers in my boutique really got me thinking about the subject, and that's why I wanted to um, sort of um, enlighten and widen the discussion and debate around it. What makes fashion sustainable? And you know, some of my customers felt that they had found um, a, a particular way to be um, sustainable. Maybe they had chosen to only buy vintage, and that they've done their bit. And you know, that, that can't help you <laughs> if you're designing it, new clothes. Yeah, it it doesn't help, but at the same time, it is one it is one fantastic way to be sustainable. But the the. the you know, there there's a broad spectrum of ways to be sustainable and it includes vintage fashion. It includes buying from designers like me who um, upcycle and use surplus um, fabric in their fashion designs. Um, but it also includes, you know, a, you know, closing rental, going to charity shops. You know, there's a, you know, there's, there's a broad um, spectrum. All right, we'll look at some of those, but we'll look at the opposite first because it seems to me that the big issue, and I think this is particularly true of maybe younger buyers and and probably more women than men I think is that idea of kind of instant fast fashion that you buy something very cheap you wear it once or twice then it goes out and you get another one and and that is not sustainable is it that's like single use plastic in your entire wardrobe yeah absolutely and the, and a lot of like the the fabrics material made in those kind of fast fashion disposable clothes is actually very closely related to plastic they're petrochemical based really? um, it, it fibers and things you know so they're yes it is it is, it is almost like wearing a and, plastic and also i guess if they're very cheap the people who made them are not going to have been very well paid they're not going to have been made under the most ethical of conditions and is that another factor do you think another criteria to think about um, absolutely, it is. You know, I think I think if you are younger and you've got less disposable income, I think you know, um, uh, I, I understand why younger people do buy it because they're constrained financially and things, and they just want to look um, great for a weekend. But you know, it's it's out of sight, out of mind. It is difficult to think about people abroad who are sewing the clothes, and they can't be made by machines. You know, they have to be made by humans. And to to think about that when you just want to have a good time on a Saturday night. Um, is is it about saying I'm going to buy less, but I'm going to buy more wisely? Uh, not only that, one of the one of the best ways, if you're um, quite confused about how to start in sustainable fashion, one of the best things to do is to look at your existing um, clothing in your wardrobe and make that last longer. One of the one of the best ways to be sustainable is to. Um, hang your clothes properly yeah. instead of a floor drove or a chair drove you know like <laughs> uh, you know pull them the right way around get them on a, on a good hanger th that fits your clothing um, that will make them last a lot longer I mean you're absolutely preaching to the converted here with me because I I like clothes a lot I've written books about clothes I'm you know I was a clothes obsessive but I've got to that stage where many of the clothes I wear now I went, I went away on holiday recently with my wife to Venice and I wanted to look elegant. I took two suits and two pairs of shoes and quite a few. We were only going for four days. The two pairs of shoes I took were both more than 10 years old um, and yet in absolutely pristine condition. They've been kept with shoe trees. They've been polished regularly. They were expensive shoes in the first That's place. That's amazing. And they last a very long time. Yeah. One of the suits I took was relatively new. The other one was 20 years old. And I've yeah. been wearing it regularly for 20 years and I've looked after it and cared for it. And it seems to me that that's one way to go about it. Absolutely. You, it probably implies you've got to buy slightly more expensive stuff in the first place because it will last longer and wear better. Yeah, um, buying better quality, um, you know, and and like you said that you know you've looked after them, and um, like another another really great thing to do is that rather than like putting them through, you know, like a, a washing machine cycle all the time, you know, um, steam steam. 
uh, steaming clothes is actually yep. quite inexpensive now, relatively inexpensive. The gadgets now, um, you know. So a, st- a steam is a good a investment. Steam, a steamer is a good investment, and you're doing two in one actually. Like if you hate ironing, it's <laughs> your, you know, you're disinfecting, you're removing odors, um, you're sterilizing your clothes at the same time, but also taking all the creases out. So it is, um, it's a really good way to like um, prolong the life of your existing. Um, now you clothing. mentioned clothes swaps and clothes rental. Do people really do that? They do. It's huge. In is fact, it? it is, but not for men, I don't no, think. No, I don't think it is for men. Yes. I mean, yes, if you're going to a wedding, you have to wear a tail coat or something, yeah, and a top hat, you're probably going to rent it. But that's almost the only occasion, I think, in the yeah. male wardrobe where that happens. I agree. And, you know, there, there, there is a designer exchange for men in Marlborough, and, um, you know, you do get men's clothing in charity shops, but I think it can look quite shoddy. Yeah. And, um, you know, but for women... Um, I mean, maybe some men, after listening to us today, they could start organising <laughs> clothes swaps. But uh, for, for women, there are clothes, clothes rental places, um, swishing and What's swapping. Swishing? It's not to be confused with swinging, so <laughs> you don't need any car keys. <laughs> so, What's swishing? So you're, you, you basically take... Um, it's like a handful of clothing, yeah. uh, maybe like three or five items that are clean and um, don't have any no holes, um, no and, holes that, yeah. and things like that. And uh, um, you go to an event that's been organized by someone and uh, sometimes um, there's an entry fee and sometimes they're free. And so you hand them in and you, got, get, you get given tokens and then you can swap them with um, for your for the value of your tokens, you can swap them and go home with something brand new. And wow. you're not actually exchanging any money. It's just the, the clothing that you're swapping. And, and renting clothes, would that be renting a dress for a, for a, a party or a, a hat or whatever it might be? Or- yeah, or even um, even designer office wear, clothing rental. You know, it, it is for. Um, it seems to be more for um, high end brands that um, you know, kind of catwalk brands. Yeah. You know, so um, clothing that you wouldn't not like everyday wear. Yeah, because you, you know, I'm always amazed at the cost of high end women's clothing. I mean, you know, my wife is very into clothes, and not that she spends fortunes, but she'll be sitting there reading Vogue, and she'll say, "How much do you think that dress is?" And I'll look at it. Will be a very beautiful dress, and I'll guess five hundred pounds. And she'll say, "No, it's seven thousand pounds." I know it's. And remarkable. I just go, "What? <laughs> who buys that stuff? Who does buy that stuff?" <laughs> People who live in another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, I mean, they are incredibly expensive, aren't they? Kind they're also incredibly group. beautiful yeah. and intricate, and you know, they're they're on another level for 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 people who don't really have to take the tube and. You know. <laughs> Um, t- tell us about what you do. I mean, is your is your brand is sustainability an important part of your brand? Sustainability is um, a non-negotiable um, aspect of my brand, really? and um, sustainability has been designed into every stage of the business. So, um, for my brand, every single um, piece of clothing is close to one hundred percent from sustainable sources, including the, the buttons. The what? So it means all of the trims. fabrics are of are, are, I don't know, reformed or... They're, yeah, they're um, end of run, surplus fabrics, wastage fabrics, wastage trims, right. um, wastage buttons, um, surplus buttons. And um, so for for me as a designer, what that means is that um, I, I make drawings and I have an idea of what I want, but some, I have to be a bit more dynamic in my creation process. Uh, in the creative process and and work with what I find as well. So sometimes it's like a treasure hunt and I find inspiration in the, the, the fabrics that I find and, and then I have to pull that together into collections so it, you know, it seems coherent. And um, so my collections are always seasonally relevant but they're not massively trend-based but trends are not really... We're almost in a post-trend yeah, world we are. now. I mean, there isn't... Because, you know, I certainly grew up in an era when there was a fashion and skirts were longer or shorter or flared or tight. or And the same even with men, you know, you would have bigger lapels or wider shoulders or narrower. That, it doesn't seem to apply anymore. It doesn't. Really. Although you couldn't wear... Maybe you couldn't wear an 80s suit jacket. <laughs> I probably couldn't, but my son probably could. Yeah. Because 80s stuff is actually Absolutely. very back in again. I, I love it. <laughs> That's that's very true, but that's actually the, the the sort of trends not mattering is actually a great boost for sustainability because yeah. then you can just flick through Vogue and, and, and think, well, actually, I've already got something lilac from last summer and I can just get something small to jazz it up for this year. 
Um, tell us where people can find out more about Pop London. Um, our website is poplondon.co.uk, but our fashion boutique is in um, Blue House Yard, North London, in Woods Green. And we've been hearing about that from Shazia Salim. Shazia, thank you very, very much.